started. Yeah, might as well. Um, I'll give a couple more minutes. You want to give it a couple more? Okay, that's cool. Yeah, just. And the uh, recording. Okay, great. Awesome. Okay. Record so far. All right. And um, so I'll just give a brief introduction and then uh, switch over to the uh, slideshow, which I'm going to share. Um, my name's Sue Kasky. I'm a corporate lawyer and a member of Philly for Bernie, Bucksmont DSA is well represented here. Thanks for joining, guys. Um, and I do some regulatory work, and we've been looking at the coronavirus legislation, and I just thought it'd be good to do something about, this isn't something that I do normally in my work life, but because I you know, read legislation for a living, uh, I thought it might be helpful to do a breakdown of what kinds of benefits are out there right now. So we have a couple different acts that have been passed, and um, thanks for those of you who are joining. Uh, I'm just getting started. Um, so I'm going to talk about two different things. I'm, there's the CARES Act, which addresses unemployment uh, and expands unemployment to people who wouldn't normally qualify. Um, well, and it also includes the cash uh, assistance that is part of the CARES Act. But then there's also the Families First Act, which is uh, that expands paid sick leave. So even though a lot of people are out of work, there are a lot of people who are still working or feel like they have to work even when they're sick. Um, and now there's paid leave for that. So I'll talk about that in a minute. With the, <laughs> hopefully the right thing will come up. No porn, right? Uh, okay, great. All right. So this presentation, um, I saw AOC do one kind of similar. Um, this is really focusing on Pennsylvania residents. Uh, the bulk of the, uh, the stuff that I'll talk about is applicable in multiple states, but just some of the details are different depending on what state. So if there's anybody on from New Jersey or something like that, it might be slightly different, but um, I'll just, I'm just talking about Pennsylvania here. Hey, Sue, can I just uh, put you on pause real quick? Sure. Is, is everybody okay with the screen share? Can you see it okay? Um, can I see it? Uh, it's just, I can see it, but it's really huge. And oh, I'm, I'm <laughs> is it taking up your whole screen? It, it, I'm actually only, I can only see like a little part of it. And I'm just wondering if every, if that's what other people's experience is, or is that just me or? Um, I can see the whole, the whole screen. Like I think everything that's supposed to be okay. visible. Okay. All right. Well, the, and yeah, it looks like Ron said it's fine for him too. So I'll just assume. Is this that, okay? Is this any different? No, you, I, th I think it's fine. It's just, it's a problem for me. So you just, just go for it. Don't oh, worry. All right. It. Sorry. Okay. I'll switch back then. Um, yeah, because I'm doing it as a slideshow, so it takes up my whole screen, which is big. So I don't know how to change the resolution on this, but sorry. Um, okay. So again, we're talking, uh, let me minimize this here. I don't know if this is in the way or not. And I can't, there we go. Okay. Um, so the CARES Act, again, covers the one-time cash payment, the expanded unemployment, and there's also something called the PUA, which is pandem Pandemic Unemployment Assistance, which is the expansion of unemployment benefits to people who wouldn't normally qualify. And then the paid sick leave is a separate um, act, um, but it's all kind of bundled in the same time frame, effective April 1st. Uh, first, I'm going to talk about the what they're calling like coronavirus tax relief, and I'm putting that in there because they are kind of tying it to tax returns, as we'll see. Um, this is, you've probably heard about this one. This is the $1,200 per person. Uh, under $75,000 a year, you get the $1,200. And then it's graduated um, up until anyone earning $99,000 uh, and above gets nothing under this uh, cash assistance. Um, I have some samples here. If you make 83,000, you get about $800. 93,000, you get about $400. If you are a head, a head of household, so a single individual, but with children, the number is higher. Um, you get a little more than 1,200. I can't recall what the exact dollar amount is, but it's, more, it's a little above the $1,200. For married couples, it's 2,400. So there's no reduction if you're married. Uh, it's 1,200 per person. And this graduation is a little bit different where you get 2,400 up to 150,000 on your joint tax return. 
Uh, at 175,000, you get about 11 or 1,200, and then above 198,000, you get zero. Oh, and also I just want to say, if you have questions, um, if we can wait till the end, that way I can get through the whole thing and then go back and ask uh, if that's okay with everyone. Um, uh, it's probably just easier and then we can take everybody off mute and, and answer questions after it's over. Um, all right, so some of the other details about the cash assistance is it's, you also can qualify for $500 for every child under age 17. Uh, the amount that you're entitled to is based on your AGI, your adjusted gross income, which is your taxable income from your 2019 tax return. If you didn't file a 2019 tax return, they will use your 2018 tax return. So that's important if you made more money in 2018 than you made in 2019, you may qualify for less of a cash bonus. Um, so if you haven't filed your 2019 tax return, they're recommending you file it right away. Um, now the reverse is true also. If you made more money in 2019 than you made in 2018, you may wanna to wait to file because then you would get more money that way. Uh, they've expanded or extended the tax deadline to July 15th, uh, but you can, if you file soon, then that means your check will come sooner. Um, probably a good idea if you really need it. Uh, they are making all of the payments by direct deposit. So, well, not all the payments, I'm sorry. They're going to use direct deposit if you get your tax refund using direct, direct deposit. So if the IRS has an account on file for you, they will deposit your cash relief amount directly into your checking or whatever account you have on file with them. If you don't have direct deposit, they'll be mailing a check. So that's kind of a, a stumbling block for a lot of people because they're planning to send out those direct deposits by beginning around April 17th. But if they have to mail you a check, it could take months. Um, they're saying eight or more weeks, but it, they can only send out something like 5 million checks a week. Uh, and so it's going to be a delay if you have to wait for a paper check. Um, there, one thing that I would add too is the IRS is working on a website where you can go in and upload your direct deposit information. There's no timeline about when that might actually happen. So um, if you've, you know, you can wait and see if that comes about sooner rather than later, and then that would be a way to get a direct deposit of this cash relief. Uh, for Social Security and disability recipients, they will also automatically get the checks just like they would their disability and Social Security checks. Um, that is also subject to the same income guidelines. And this cash relief, there have been some rumors that it's taxable. It is not taxable. You don't have to put it on your tax, or you won't be taxed on it uh, next year. Okay. This is the tricky part. So there are a lot of people who will not get a check. Um, any taxpayer who earned too much to qualify based on those, um, those guidelines that I outlined earlier, uh, another one that's a problem is dependents who are 17 years old and older will not be getting any assistance at all. So if you are a parent and you have a 20 something living at home with you, but you filed for them, you filed them on your tax return as a dependent, uh, you will not get an extra amount for that child or that dependent. So that's, that's kind of tricky. Um, the college kids who are coming home, who parents may still declare on their taxes, it's, there's no extra for that. If you haven't filed a tax return or you don't normally file a tax return, uh, they have no way to send you a check. So uh, they are recommending at the IRS that even if you don't normally file, you might want to file just an informational return. And that way they have your social security number on file and you can also sign up for the direct deposit and you can get your check that way. Um, you can do that for free at the irs.gov website, and I have a link later at the end of the presentation. And the deadline for filing this year, they've actually extended to July 15th, too. So if you haven't filed for 2019, you have until July 15th to do that. Also, non-resident aliens, anyone who is here at, on a, a visa is not eligible, and undocumented immigrants are not eligible, um, which, of course, is a big problem. It's a big percentage of the population, especially in urban areas. And these are people who pay taxes, but they are not going to qualify under this cash relief bill. 
So this is just a quick summary of the high points. Um, and by the way, I'll be making this available to this document as a PDF. So um, I probably should have said that at the beginning for anybody who's a note taker, you don't need to do that necessarily. Um, yeah, so the high points are the cash payments should go out beginning April 17th. It's based on your 2019 adjusted gross income. Unless you haven't filed 2019, then they'll look at 2018. The maximums are 1,200 for single, 2,400 for couples, plus 500 for children. And the payment is gonna be going to taxpayers, social security recipients and, and disability recipients. Um, I would say just keep checking the IRS website to see if they do make changes to that direct deposit requirement. And they give you a way to sign up for that. Families First Coronavirus Response Act. Uh, this, I included this here because um, before we go to unemployment, I thought I'd address people who are employed. So a lot of people have lost their jobs, but a lot of people are still working or have to work. Um, either they're uh, you know, necessary workers or they just can't afford to not work. And what this does is it gives employers a way to pay for paid uh, sick leave, which employers may not necessarily offer. Um, this is really detailed. I took this off the IRS website and I'm really going to talk about just kind of the basics rather than read the slides, which is always really boring. Um, the way this works is that uh, employees who are unable to work because they're quarantined or they're diagnosed or they're waiting for a diagnosis um, is that you get two weeks paid sick leave up to, they say up to 80 hours, but they're talking about like a 40 hour week. You get two 40 hour weeks at your regular rate of pay. If you are taking care of another individual who is sick or quarantined, or you have a child whose school has been closed, um, or, and that last sentence in the second paragraph is um, a little tricky, but if you, have, if you have symptoms, so if you have a fever and a cough and you're staying home because of that, but you haven't been formally diagnosed or you haven't gotten a test, you can still take two weeks paid, paid vacation, paid sick leave, but you get two thirds of your regular rate of pay. You don't get the full amount. So at least if, you're, if your employer is going to send you home sick, you're going to be able to get something. Uh, and then the last paragraph is really kind of an extension of Family Medical Leave Act, where if you're caring for a child who's not able to be in school, you can get the additional 10 weeks paid. So Family Medical Leave Act is 12 weeks. It does not have to be paid under federal law. Some employers do pay for that time. Uh, what this does is it allows uh, caregivers for children um, to take the entire 12 weeks paid. So that's, the, that's this third part here. Okay. Um, some of the details that you should know is you don't have to apply for this. Your employer should be paying it automatically in your paycheck, just like they would any other paid time off. Uh, employees who work for companies with 500 or fewer employees are eligible and employers with fewer than 50 employees can actually apply for a waiver, which could be a problem if you work for a small company, they can get a waiver, in which case you would not be able to get this paid sick leave. Um, and employees who are full-time employees can get up to the 80 hours. If you're part-time, you can still also get a benefit, but they're going to take the average of hours that you work over a two-week period, and that's the amount you'll get for each week. So if you work 20 hours one week and 40 hours the next week, you'll get 30 hours of paid leave for each week. I think that's right. <clears throat> so um, for the extra 10 weeks for the Family Medical Leave Act, you have to have worked for at least 30 days prior to requesting that leave or taking that leave. And the other qualification is that if you're at home taking care of a child, you can't be teleworking at the same time. So just because you're home with a child doesn't mean you automatically get the payment. If you're also working, you're not going to qualify. Okay. Um, this is uh, the list right off the IRS website, um, or I'm sorry, Department of Labor website. And this, these are the requirements that you must meet in order to qualify for this paid sick leave. So uh, again, you have to be subject to the quarantine or isolation. You've been advised by a doctor that you shouldn't be working. Uh, you have symptoms and you're waiting for a diagnosis um, or you can have substantially similar symptoms and not have a diagnosis. That's the last bullet. 
or you can be caring for an individual who is also sick or caring for a child whose school is closed. And all of this is as a result of coronavirus. All right. Uh, again, this is just a quick summary, but full and part-time employees are available, are able to take advantage of this. Um, the paid leave is available for the caretakers for the extra 10 weeks. It's automatically paid with your paycheck, but you can't be working at the same time and you have to meet one of those qualifying reasons. The other thing that I would add is they do have a cap on the total amount of the payment that you can earn. So if you're making $3,000 a week, you're not going to get paid sick leave of $3,000 a week. They do cap it at a at a certain number and it's a graduated number so that's on the on the department of labor website i also have a link to that so you can look for that um, if you want more details okay um, this is the unemployment section the expanded unemployment is part of the cares act as well so um, if you've already applied, you're probably familiar with this. You, it, it, this act extended the number of weeks that you're able to collect benefits. It's added the $600 per week additional benefit up to $600. <clears throat> and it also expands the, the workers that are covered to include independent contractors, 1099 employees, self-employed, and um, other individuals who can't work. For the unemployment compensation part, um, and this is the standard, if you file for standard unemployment compensation, you qualify for unemployment the way you normally would, um, you get the 26 weeks that Pennsylvania gives plus an extra 13. So what this act did is it added 13 weeks onto whatever your state's um, maximum is. And the government's going to pay an additional $600 in benefits up to the amount of your full paycheck. So. Um, at, oh, and workers are not eligible if you're getting some other paid leave. So if you're getting paid sick leave under the family first, or your employer pays for sick leave, or you're taking vacation time or something like that, you have to wait to file for unemployment compensation until you have exhausted that amount. And this is a little bit about that $600. So it's the state maximum is 573. Uh, for example, if you make $725, you'll get an extra $152 to reach your normal pay. And the government is paying this amount up to four months through July 31st. Um, if you've already been approved for benefits, you don't need to apply again to get the $600. And if you're eligible, um, you can just apply as you normally would for unemployment compensation. This will happen automatically, and it will be paid retroactively if you filed uh, for anyone who filed after March 29th. So you may have filed for unemployment, say in mid-March, um, but beginning March 29th, you will be able to receive this extra, this extra $600, the extra bonus. Okay, so this is just, again, a summary of the number of weeks and the amount. Um, now the non-eligible workers, if you're not eligible for unemployment compensation, the standard unemployment compensation, you can apply for this PUA benefit, which I'm gonna talk about next. Oh, and they also are asking that you please try to register on the website as hard as it is. The phone takes longer and they're trying to reserve the phone for people with disabilities or who are unable to file online. Okay, this is an extra expanded piece of the CARES Act where they're extending unemployment assistance to workers who normally wouldn't qualify and they're calling a pandemic unemployment assistance PUA. Okay. Okay, um, so the way that this works is each state is going to determine how they want to implement this. So you'll see there are a couple different options. Some are available right away, some are not. Um, the CARES Act allows people in these different situations to apply for unemployment and they get the same benefit. They get, also get the 39 weeks, they also get the additional $600 payment. So these are the conditions in which you may be able to get additional unemployment where you might not have before. If you're self-employed, if you're looking for part-time employment, if, you are, if your employer closes um, either temporarily or permanently because of COVID, your hours are reduced, um, or you've been told to stay home in order to mitigate the spread of the virus, or you've been told to isolate or self-quarantine. 
So for example, in those cases, you may not have been literally laid off, but you're told to stay home and then you can collect unemployment. Um, in Pennsylvania, this is from their website. So I indicated this because uh, for most people, you can file for unemployment compensation the way you would for standard unemployment compensation. So let me go back for one second. So some of these options, if your hours are reduced or you've been told to stay home or you're looking for part-time employment, in those conditions it, in Pennsylvania, they ask that you go to the unemployment compensation website and you just go through the questionnaire and file as if you were terminated from your job. The, the exception is for self-employed and independent contractors. Um, on the website, it says while it is going, they are going to provide these benefits, self-employed, independent, 1099, gig workers, they don't have an application set up online yet. So you can't file under the regular website for unemployment compensation. They want you to just keep checking this web page until they have a way for you to apply here. So um, I do have a link to this page on the at the end of the at the end of the slideshow and you just have to kind of keep hitting F7 or F5 or whatever it is to refresh. All right, um, I, this is a really handy guide to, you can get this at the unemployment compensation website and it explains the different scenarios. Um, let me see if I can, I don't think I can zoom in on this. Um, oh wait, yes I can. So, what they do here is they just down the left hand side, they list all of the different um, possible scenarios that I was just discussing. And then they have the columns that show you which ones you can collect for those scenarios. So the first one is paid leave if your employer makes it available. The middle column is paid leave for the families first, and that's the paid sick leave. And then the third column is the expanded unemployment compensation. I know I'm not going to address workers' comp. Uh, today, it's pretty much the same as it would be normally. All right, again, this is from the Pennsylvania website, kind of gives you the same list. Uh, okay, so the summary for the PUA expansion just is that they're expanding the workers that are able to qualify for the unemployment compensation. And even if you wouldn't normally get unemployment compensation, you may qualify for PUA for the same types of benefits as, um, as unemployment would normally provide. Okay, so this is the summary of everything that I've been discussing, the, the, three, different, um, the three different CARES Act benefits, the cash emergency assistance, expanded unemployment compensation, and the pandemic uh, unemployment assistance, plus the Families First Act, um, which is the paid sick leave. So uh, these are the different resources that I quoted, um, the IRS website. This link is where you can file for free if you haven't filed your 2019 taxes yet. The Department of Labor website, this is really helpful because that front family first paid sick leave, there are a lot of other uh, components to that. So it's really good to just take a look. Um, your employer, if they haven't applied for an exception, they should be just putting allowing you to get paid automatically. So you should probably talk to your employer about that if you do have to go out on sick leave just to make sure they're aware. They get reimbursed by the government for that. Um, Pennsylvania unemployment website. I put this link here because the Washington Post actually has a little calculator on the website that you can go in and put in how much you earn or what your AGI is and it shows you how much you can qualify for. And then uh, the last item is the US Capitol switchboard. So <laughs> the reason I put this here is that there are a lot of big gaps in this bill. Um, most of you on this call probably already know that the cash assistance is just not enough. It's just not enough. It's not enough to keep people afloat, keep people alive, pay rent and what have you. Um, not everyone qualifies for unemployment compensation. And, and even with that, um, unemployment compensation doesn't always fully compensate you for what you normally earn. So uh, I suggest that you make your voice heard, talk to your representatives, to your Congress people, your senators, and just let them know that you really need additional assistance. I mean, there's going to be a few weeks before they are out there 
uh, before they're back in Washington. And they're starting to re write new bills now. But um, I would just say stay tuned because uh, some of us are um, pretty active about posting new information about what they're proposing in these bills. And we really do need assistance for, for Americans and not just for the corporations at this time, because this is really, um, this bill is helpful, but it's just not enough. So, um, all right, uh, that's actually the end. So I kind of zipped right through. I will stop sharing. So I guess, um, There I go. Um, so I was just going to say, if anybody has a question or something, um, I can answer some questions. Or I'm really interesting, uh, interested to hear if um, anyone knows of other statutes or other regulations and laws that are being proposed that would address some of the gaps in this bill. So um, I'll just kind of open it up if anybody's if anybody has a question about what I just shared. Uh, can I ask, is everybody, is anyone on the call already filed for unemployment compensation? Is anybody getting unemployment now from having been laid off from the bill or having been laid off from work under this bill? Um, someone just virtually raised their hand. Oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. Hi. Yeah. That's just something that we sometimes do in case like a a lot of people want to ask questions, like drop a star in the chat and that way we can take stack and like maintain oh. an order to question asking. Um, oh, yeah, we don't have a raised hand thing here, do we? So. Yeah, I don't know how to even use that, but that's just how we do it okay. in case people want to ask. Um, okay. I am on unemployment. Um, I filed for unemployment. Um, actually, before all of this happened, I lost my job right before, um, interestingly enough. So I actually had a question for you regarding what you've learned so far. Um, so I was on unemployment before this. I've been collecting for maybe just like a month before. Um, and I was curious if these different statutes are automatically applied to the unemployment I'm already collecting. So what, will, what you'll be able to get is the $600 will apply beginning March 29th. Um, and that's a number, I, I think that's Pennsylvania specific because I, heard somewhere else that it was a little bit earlier in other states, but that I could be wrong about that. But at least as of March 29th, you should be getting the extra amount up to $600. Um, and the 13 weeks will apply to you. So you will get an additional 13 weeks, even though you already started collecting before the 29th. So that okay. expansion will apply. And, and has the expansion already made its way into the unemployment checks if you are already collecting? Should that like be posting? Um, probably not. Uh, the yeah. reason is they it all kind of started, um, well, they just passed the bill, I think, what, a couple, like a week and a half, two weeks ago, mm -hmm. and some states are catching up, but you will get a backdated amount. So you'll get it paid retroactively to March 29th. Mm -hmm. one, of my, one of my close friends had, did apply under these statutes, and, and he noticed that even though he's collecting unemployment, he is not receiving the expanded payments. So mm -hmm. I was just curious. Yeah, they actually say that on the Pennsylvania website. They say um, that even if you haven't received it yet, they will be backdating that amount. So you'll get a big check at some point that includes all of the extra amounts back to March 29th. So, so. and then going forward, you should continue to get it. Got it. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Uh, let's see. Oh, I see the more section. Looks like Elliot. Elliot's got their hand up. So Elliot, you want to go ahead? Uh, thanks. Uh, I couldn't find the, yeah, I didn't have a more section. I usually see it, but now it's like reactions. Okay. Anyway, um, I was just wondering with the 2018 versus 2019 um, filing, if you just stick with the 2018, because uh, you uh, made less money in that return, um, uh, is that going to delay things? Well, if you filed in 2018 and you had direct deposit selected as the way you get your refund, mm -hmm. you'll get a direct deposit refund. They, okay. if, 
if you haven't, the only time they would look at 2018 is if you haven't filed your 2019. So you can wait to file 2019. Again, the deadline is July 15th. So whether it will be the same timing or later, I'm not sure whether they are going to go through all the 2019 filers first and then go to 2018 or how that would work exactly. But you're probably pretty much guaranteed to get it faster with direct deposit than a check, if, even if they're using 2018 numbers. Okay. So, yeah, so I think I, yeah, I think I did have it do, yeah, I did it at direct deposit. I was just checking on TurboTax. I just used that. So, yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? So, I, um, the other thing I was just going to mention is um, I, I, it's really important, I think, that we try to advocate for getting more in the next bill because I think there were a lot of suggestions that were floated last time. Um, you know, some of the more progressive members of Congress were talking about automatic payments every week to everyone, larger payments, uh, not tying it to taxes and things like that. So. I honestly don't know to what extent that's going to be part of any additional bill that they come up with in the next few weeks, but I think that it's important if that we kind of organize around that and try to contact our Congress people and let them know that we're looking for that kind of assistance because right now it's just really, you know, it's not enough to keep people going. And, um, and I think it's a, it would be good to see that they're aware of that. I think that even, their feet is to their feet are to the fire this time, I think, because people are starting to realize they're having trouble covering rent. So they're gonna either gonna be letting people not pay rent or they're gonna pay us more money. So you know I, uh, I, I would definitely wanna try and work with you on on doing something like that, putting the campaign together, um, mm -hmm. that we can kind of promote through Philly for Bernie and like all the other groups that we've been working with. Yeah. Uh, but I wanna point out that we've got Rachel with her hand up and then Anthony is next up. Okay. Yes, my question is um, the twelve hundred for people who make under seventy five thousand. Was that it? Right. Is that proportionate to how much under seventy five thousand you make, or is it us just um, twelve hundred if you make under seventy five thousand? Right. Anyone up to seventy five thousand gets the twelve hundred. Okay. If you're a single head of household, so if you're a single parent with a child, I, I want to say it's like 13 something. It's higher. It's a little bit higher, but again, oh, up to 75,000. Okay. Right. So a single parent of four children. <laughs> well, actually, children no, one of them, under 17. One of them, my yeah. kids is 18. Okay. I mean, still fully dependent. So it's, it's absurd that there's that loophole. But, totally um, absurd. Right. I, yeah. I mean, if okay. you, yeah, if you think about it, like how many kids got kicked out of school, like they had to end their college because of COVID, their home, they probably aren't working or, you know, or they're just, you know, still living at home or, or going to, you know, working part time or something. The parents are still um, claiming them as a dependent. Yeah. And you don't get anything for those kids. Yeah. Just I mean, fortunately, fortunately, he's been working mm -hmm. for like two years at the same job. So he has filed for unemployment and right. he um, will get that, you know, that added benefit of right. basically he'll get his full pay because he just, he makes so little that the 600 additional will be more than, right. like he won't max that out. So, um, so that's Does good. Does he but, file his own tax return or is he dependent? He files, he files it, but he doesn't claim himself. I claim him okay. still. All right. So, yeah, that, so that extra, that extra cash assistance won't come through, but, but yeah, all the other right, benefits right. are there. So the, the unemployment benefits. Yeah. But yeah, I mean that, it just yeah. seems like when they have so much money to spend on, you know, 6 trillion or whatever from the fed going to yeah. corporations, but they can't give us enough to pay the, <laughs> to pay the rent. Yeah. It's just kind of. I think they're going to realize that they just better do something soon or everybody's going to start to riot. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful. Maybe I shouldn't be, maybe it's, you know, stupid to be hopeful, but that 
people will start to realize that that $1,200 a month is like what somebody would make mm -hmm. working minimum wage full time. Right. So realizing how little minimum wage really is mm -hmm. and hopefully get some attention to increasing the minimum wage. Right. Um, well, not but only anyway, that, that's, that's, not a, that's not a monthly payment. That's a one-time payment. Oh, right. Yeah, that. exactly. And then that's it. Exactly. And some people yeah. who have to wait for a check, they're going to get it and maybe, they might get it in May or June or July. They're even saying August yeah. possibly. So it's just a ridiculous system. But Well, I had, I had one other question related to what you just said. Um, for poor people who are like, don't make enough to even be in the habit of filing taxes because they don't make enough to have to pay taxes. Mm -hmm. um, well, so your recommendation would be for them to, to file a tax return anyway, so that the government has updated contact information for them and a, and a good way to, to get a check or a deposit to them. Is that, is that the best advice for? Yeah, that's what they're recommending. So the IRS even recommends that on their website. They say, if you're not in the habit of filing, because you don't make enough or it's not worth it. Um, they recommend just filing a return this time so that you get that $1,200 or 2,400 if you're married or you have children and so on. So it's still, uh, and because it's free to file now on their website, um, yeah. it's really a good idea to just do it to get the money. Yeah. 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 That might be a good, a good campaign to work on to help people do that who have never done it before. I mean, people might not be aware. They might think like, oh, you know, it's too much paperwork or I don't know how to do this or, but really it's like the easy form is really short. It takes a few minutes yeah. and, you know, they're not going to wind up having to pay taxes because if they're not making enough to file in the first yeah. place, yeah, it's a good idea. It's a really good yeah. idea. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Thanks. Sue. Thanks for that. My other questions that I had going into it, you already answered in your, in your slideshow. So thanks. Oh, okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, I think it was Anthony who's next. Yes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I just, there were a couple of things um, that Bo and Jack Rabbit had touched on um, about like forward movement, um, since there are obvious gaps in what's been developed. Um, so I just wanted to touch on some of that. Also one, I just want to say, Rachel, there's, I wouldn't say that it's stupid to feel hopeful. There are a lot of things that we work against that um, it can be easy to feel really hopeless. and too often in disasters like there's a concept of disaster capitalism where like people harp on it's like kind of suffering so i think one of the better ways to fight against that is to that like people will learn from this and we can be really loud about it specifically like amongst our communities and like with congress people um so just wanted to say like don't feel hopeless <laughs> thank um, you um, so in terms of stuff we've seen um, also, if we're going to be making calls to Congress, I don't know if anyone saw this in the news recently, but Spain has considered um, expanding and creating a more substantial universal basic income program in response wow. to what is happening. So mm -hmm. that's something you can mobilize against if you're going to tell your friends who are currently in, in the house doing nothing, like call Congress. Um, there is something you can do that can easily help you localize your like congressperson. Like you can find out who it is specifically mm -hmm. using something called the People's Bailout. Um, the People's Bailout is yes. being pushed in a lot of different grassroots organizing communities. Um, Sunrise being one of the, um, I guess we're trying to be pretty loud about it. Mm -hmm. um, and it kind of does point to some of the equities, even what Congress has pushed as a solution. Um, you know, the People's Bailout is still really loudly cheering for things that are undeniably missing from the CARES Act and the Families First Act. Um, so I'd recommend looking that up. Sunrise has a People's Bailout website where you can find your congressperson and kind of yell at them about like these five um, foundational pillars of what we really need. So I would still mobilize using that because you can still say like other countries have done more. The People's Bailout's asking for more. You know, like this isn't enough. So if you need something to like tell your friends to latch on to, like an anchor, I would say the People's Bailout's probably a good response to a campaign so we don't like recreate the wheel. That's just it's like an input from Sunrise. Yeah, Delia, I'm, like, I am so glad you raised that because I've been on their site and it is really detailed and it does have all the policies that Bernie's been talking about or AOC, like some of the really progressive members of Congress um, and others. I think the DSA is also signed on to that, to the people's bailout. I think they're helping promote it. So that's a really great idea for mobilizing behind something that's, you know, hopefully will snowball because it does include all the policies that 
are not only missing here, but things that they should have been doing from day one. So um, that's, a, that's great, I think. And, and I think, Jack, you were talking earlier about working on something. I think that's a good place to go, a good place to start or to, you know, contribute to the activism around that that's going on already. Yeah. I think it's just combinational. So that way, like we don't create a new campaign. We just right. make the people's ballot campaign that much louder and that helps it expand and get more and more attention mm -hmm. and hopefully make people in Congress moderate or wherever they fall on the spectrum start to realize they need to right. do more. Yeah, well, and the other thing is too that I think even moderate members of Congress are realizing that this wasn't enough. They didn't do enough. And, you know, um, when they talk about, you know, pulling an idea off the shelf in a time of crisis, as, you know, Naomi Klein talks about, this is an idea that we need to put on a shelf and say, this is the idea you have to pull off the shelf now, you know, not the neoliberal, you know, Milton Friedman ideas, but something that's really going to resolve these problems, because this is not going away in the next couple of weeks, you know, so um, it is, it's a really great program, that whole, uh, the people's bailout. Is, is really great. Is that a separate website or, or is that um, a separate group that's coordinating everyone? Link, or? There's actually a link in the chat right now for that. Great. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else have a question or anything? Well, um, if Anybody, if no one else has a comment or a question, I w wanted to just let you know, um, I'm going to post the PDF of the presentation and I'm making it available under Creative Commons. So if anybody wants to copy it, take it, do whatever you want with it, I don't care, um, <laughs> spread it far and wide. Uh, and then Jack's taping, we've taped the recording so that we can make that available. But I wanted to say thanks. Thank you for joining and asking some great questions and providing some great information. So um, I really appreciate it. Yeah, you're, you're uh, great job, Sue. Thank you so much for doing this. It's, it's amazing and really yes. helpful. And I'll be uh, sending out an email with the link to the video and uh, you know, also the, uh, a link to your, your slide deck. So. All right, wonderful. Thanks. Thanks everybody. Great to have you on. All right, thanks. Yeah, thank you so much for joining thanks everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Right. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye.